Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming out. Uh, first, I just want to say our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody uh, being affected by by Dorian right now. Uh, particularly seeing what it's doing in the Bahamas, a, a place where we had a great experience a couple a couple years ago in the Bahamas Bowl. All our friends down there thinking about them, and then all the folks in Florida on the on the East Coast. There may be an impact with us here uh, later in the week, so you know we'll prepare for it and really send out positive thoughts to those that that might be affected uh, going to the game Saturday it was great to get the first win to start the season one and0 as I explained to our team they were they were a little bit disappointed in um, how it ended but the point I wanted to make to them was that you know they they won a football game and that's that's one step closer to where we want to be playing someplace warm uh, in December and uh, with the stadium the excitement uh, you know that was all great great job by everybody associated with Old Dominion Steve Ballard uh, putting that together for us we had 57 players that played in this game and and got much needed uh, experience we had 23. Um, first-time players playing this game, including our quarterback, uh, Stone Smart. We had six new starters on defense. We had eight new starters on offense. This is basically as young as we've been since our first game uh, in 2009 or, or as new uh, as we've been You know, with having the grad transfers play and the junior college transfers play. So uh, really happy to get the win. Uh, a lot of credit to uh, Coach Scott, I, uh, Latrell Scott with Norfolk State. I talked to him after the game. I messaged him this morning. They played good football. They played hard. want to wish them well. I hope they have a have a great year moving forward. Uh, we went through some growing pains with the new systems on offense and defense, what we're trying to do. But uh, I feel really good about where we can go with this football team, starting with, with special teams, uh, not as well as expected in, in what we did there. We didn't punt the ball very well. Nick was one for two on field goals. He missed a 37-yarder, which is usually a chip shot uh, for him. He had made... 11 in a row going up to that one. And then Brad Davis, two of his five kicks were touchbacks, and he had been uh, a lot better than that in the preseason. We did win the drive start by four and a half yards, which is something that's that's big for us, a style of football we're playing, uh, having better field position in the game. Defensively, uh, when you look at the yards, you'd say that's one of the best Old Dominion performances in years, uh, only allowing 268 yards, three turnovers, uh, really solid performance overall by our defense. Um, two of the touchdowns that we allowed on defense came off offensive turnovers uh, and short fields. Obviously, we want to respond better in those sudden change situations, but if we can do a really good job protecting the ball on offense, make people drive the field, uh, we're going to be in much better shape. Garner and Hall each had eight tackles to lead us. Um, Geronda Hall was playing a new position, that nickel position. He had been boundary corner last year. So it was really good to see him get off to a good start and playing his first game at a brand new position. Jeremy Ross, um, or I'm sorry, Jawan Ross had, had five tackles as an interior lineman. Jerry, Jeremy Miser had three. They were disruptive the entire game. So it was really good to see those two interior guys uh, play good football. And then as I mentioned, we had three turnovers overall in this game, which was uh, which was great to see. We had Caleb Ford Dement, first time starter at the field corner, got the big interception uh, early in the football game. And then we had uh, Justin Richardson caused a fumble that Geronda Hall recovered. And then to seal the game, Lance Boykins interception off a blitz late uh, when we were protecting the lead. So uh, pleased with that offensively. Uh, got off to a great start in this game. First two drives right down the field. 11 plays, 65 yards. We chewed up seven minutes, which if we can do that all year, uh, particularly chewing up that amount of clock, I'll, I'll take it. Coach Blackwell loves those nice seven-minute drives from a defensive standpoint. And then uh, off their uh, errant punt, we had a seven-play 40-yard drive. So we're 14 to nothing early. We get to pick. We got the ball back. We got a chance to put the game away. And, and we didn't convert offensively. We missed the field goal. And at that point, uh, just did not play 
consistent football. I was pleased with Stone Smart, uh, his first start, complete 74% of his passes. Uh, he totaled 208 yards. He, he really just made one mistake in this game. He threw the ball late down the middle. Uh, he had Chris Cunningham open. He didn't see it early. He tried to force it late, which is a cardinal rule of quarterback play. We never throw the ball late down uh, the field. And, and both our interceptions happened on that. Steven Williams on the reverse pass tried to throw it late down the field instead of tucking it and running it. And that, that accounted for both our turnovers. We'll learn from that. Uh, we'll get better from that. Um, we'll get better in the run game. This was the first time we had, we had three new starters uh, in the offensive line. So we, we had some solid performance, particularly late in the game when we needed that touchdown. But we'll, we'll improve up front there. I was really pleased with um, uh, Eric Kuma and Stevie Williams outside, you know, two first time starters for Old Dominion at, at wide receiver. Uh, Eric had a couple of huge catches in this game. Stevie played well. And then uh, Marcus Joyner, a couple big catches at tight end. Chris Cunningham, uh, our other Virginia Tech graduate, played good football. So overall, uh, we'll get better there. This week's opponent, uh, Virginia Tech, is 0 1 right now, coming off a 35 28 loss to Boston College, a game that they dominated in the yards, plays, uh, field position, time of possession. Uh, it was the turnovers that got them. They turned the ball over five times. Boston College only had one in this game. Um, you know, for them, they're, they're sitting there at 0 and 1 right now. Uh, they've lost seven of their last 10 games, which is something you never see uh, with Virginia Tech. You got to go back 30 years to find a stretch like this for them. Um, and it wasn't necessarily just our game last year because the week after we beat them here, they, they went on national television and beat, beat Duke uh, handily, a team that was undefeated at the time, had the sixth pick in the draft at quarterback. It was since that time when they started 3-1, and one, um, they've lost seven of their last 10 football games, and it's a really challenging stretch for them. And I bring that up because this is clearly a must-win game for them, not only because it's Old Dominion, a team they're expected to beat by by 30-plus points, but because they need the win. They need to get themselves uh, a win. So we're in a little bit of a different situation than we were last year when we played them, when they were undefeated, had that huge convincing win at Florida State, 2-0 and nationally ranked to uh, where they are right now. So we know they're going to be uh, ready to play in this football game. Offensively, Ryan Willis at quarterback. Um, he had three interceptions in the Boston College game, but I, I feel like he's playing better football. He's looked like his arm is stronger than last year. Uh, he threw the ball to nine different receivers. They're good up front. They did struggle in the run game. Uh, Might have just been the first game. Defensively, they're multiple. They're big. They're fast. They're talented uh, in a Bud Foster defense. They're going to load the box and really challenge us to make plays um, outside. But I suspect they'll be uh, be ready to go this Saturday. They got put in some tough spots defensively against Boston College. Three of the five touchdowns they allowed were on short fields off of turnovers. And similar to what happened to us Saturday night, sometimes those sudden change can be difficult. Um, for this game, uh, I'm going to announce that um, Chris Cunningham and Eric Kuma will be captains this week, along with Lawrence Garner and Isaac Weaver. And the reason I'm doing that, number one, those two have just been tremendous leaders since they arrived. They've only been with us for four months, but they've already made a huge impact on our program. And I'm talking about two guys that had scholarship offers to Power 5 schools. They could have gone to a lot of places, and they both made it clear they wanted to go somewhere that was the best fit for them as, as players and as people. Uh, and since they've been here, just tremendous leadership. They're two of the hardest workers on the team. Uh, our players look up to them, particularly the younger players who who saw them play last year. You know, in the Florida State game, where Cunningham blocked a, a punt, Kuma caught it in the air, and. Ran it in for a touchdown, and then Kuma had a 50-yard touchdown catch. They both played well against us. Cunningham caught a touchdown late to tie it uh, in our game, and I felt like they both played good football at the end of the year. I know there was a, uh, an article that came out a couple months ago that said uh, some of the guys who were no longer with the program uh, might have been a factor, and I emphasize might because I believe it was an anonymous source that was quoted in the article, but uh, the guys that left might have been and 
uh, a factor in why they weren't winning as many games. And um, that, was, that was bothersome and hurtful to both of those players to be associated with uh, a situation where they might have been considered responsible uh, for the lack of wins last year. And um, I went back and looked at those end of season games. I watched the Virginia game and the Marshall game and the Cincinnati game. And those two were playing hard, playing good football. Kuma played with a broken hand in the Marshall game and the bowl game. Cincinnati and caught a touchdown pass in both. Uh, Cunningham caught a touchdown pass in Cincinnati in the Cincinnati game. So you look at those two guys, and I think you can say they both were playing their tails off uh, for Virginia Tech last year. They graduated. They have degrees. They have close friends uh, on this team that I've, I've asked them not to have a lot of communication with this week because we want to play and win a game. But I'm really proud of what those two guys have done. From, from my philosophy as a head coach, when you're going to take transfer players, uh, you better take some guys that have character and are good team guys. And along with them, Tobias Moss from South Alabama played really good football at corner the other night. Calvin Bruton from Florida State started at safety and played good football. So I feel really good about our four graduate transfers. And, and these two guys, it's a special game for them, both Eric and Chris. And tonight, uh, really excited to announce them uh, as captains. And I will gladly take questions. Bobby, looking back at last week and you know, all the build up to the game, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you think you guys handled that? And how do you mm -hmm. think that could maybe uh, help you mm -hmm. this week going to another game where there's going to be a lot of other you know, sure. talk outside? Yeah, you always. I look at all those situations, and I always look at the start of the game. You know, how do you start out? And we started out great, um, fourteen to nothing, and then got the got the turnover. So I, I felt like they handled it well. They were really excited to play. They wanted to play well. Um, you know, they, they started to press a little bit in the middle part of the game, and, and that was a good learning experience because we need to learn how to handle um, some of those adverse situations. But in terms of the start of it, Ed, uh, couldn't have been any more happy with that and, um, you know, how excited they were to play, and they, they wanted to play well. And we're still waiting to see exactly what's going to happen uh, with the storm, but I mm. think the plans practice-wise for mm -hmm. Yeah, I've already been in communication with our, our university leadership, and it really comes down to um, what we get on the next report tonight and then tomorrow morning, um, whether or not we'll have to adjust any of our schedule. Um, unfortunately, we've been through it before. Uh, fortunately, we've got some plans, uh, if we need to, that we can work out. But uh, let's all hope that storm bangs a, bangs a serious right and heads out in the Atlantic and just goes and plays with itself. How about that? <laughs> Anything else for Coach? All right, thank you all for coming. Have a great week, everybody.